As we hear God's word in scripture and join with Christ in his sacrifice of himself to the will of the Father, we invite you to worship with us in the celebration of the Mass. heavens pour down from heaven. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. Today we celebrate the feast day of St. Stanislaw, martyr and uh, bishop of Poland, around 1079. My brothers and sisters, as we prepare to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us take a moment to call to mind our sins. Lord Jesus, you were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. 
Lord Jesus, who came to call sinners to a new life in the Spirit, Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the way, the truth, and the life. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who for the salvation of the world brought about the pastoral sacrifice, be favorable to the supplication of your people, that Christ our High Priest, interceding on our behalf, may by his likeness to ourselves bring us reconciliation. We pray also today and honor this Bishop St. Stanislaus, who fell beneath the swords of his persecutors. Grant, we pray, that we may persevere strong in faith, even until death, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Orders, did we not to stop teaching in that name? Yet you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching and want to bring this man's blood upon us. But Peter and the apostles said in reply, We must obey God rather than men. The God of our ancestors raised Jesus, though you had been killed by hanging on him on a tree. God exalted him at his right hand. God has given to those who obey them. When they heard this, they became infuriated and wanted to put them to death. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall be ever in my mouth. Taste and see how good the Lord is. Blessed the man who takes refuge in him. The Lord is the of the Lord. The Lord confronts evildoers to destroy remembrance of them from the earth. When the just cry out, the Lord hears them, and from all their distress he rescues them. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. and those who are crushed in spirit he saves. Many are the troubles of the just man, but out of them all the Lord delivers him. The Lord, Lord hears, hears the cry of the poor. Alleluia, alleluia. You believe in me, Thomas, because you have seen me, says the Lord. Blessed are those who have not seen, but still believe. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. The one who comes from above is above all. The one who is of the earth is earthly and speaks of earthly things. But the one who comes from heaven is above all. He testifies to what he has seen and heard, but no one accepts his testimony. Whoever does not, not, does not accept his testimony certifies that God is trustworthy. Who do, whoever does accept his testimony certifies that God is trustworthy. For the one whom God sent speaks the word of God. He does not ration his gift of the Spirit. The Father loves the Son and has given everything over to him. Whoever believes in the Son has eternal life. For whoever, but whoever disobeys the Son will not see life, but the wrath of God remains upon him. The Gospel of the Lord. 
Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Apologize for my little microphone malfunction today. At the very last minute, I realized that I had white vestments on, so I turned my mic off, put on the red vestments, but then forgot to reattach it all right. So um, I'm back online now, and uh, hopefully you can hear me all now. Today we continue, of course, in the Easter season, and we're reading through the Acts of the Apostles, and we see the gospel of the the early apostles preaching uh, the gospel. And uh, they preach a very charismatic, we call it a charismatic gospel. It's a very, it's the short, basically, that God so loved the world that he sent his only son that we might have life eternal. And today we hear them preaching with those fundamental principles of our faith. Peter and apostles reply, we must obey God rather than man. The God of our ancestors raised Jesus, though you had him killed by hanging him on a tree. God exalted him to the right hand as leader and savior to grant Israel repentance and forgiveness of their sins. We are witness of these things as in the Holy Spirit whom God has given to those who obey him. You have right there the whole little context of all the things we're preaching about and teaching about and the whole Acts of the Apostles is about. That this God came and yet you killed him, but God raised him up and made him leader and savior. And through him, we have the forgiveness of our sins. And we are witness of these things because we have received that gift of the Holy Spirit that gives us now that courage and knowledge and understanding uh, to go out and proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ. And that's what I always speak of in my confirmation con con uh, context is that uh, sermon is that uh, we're all called to, to embrace the mission of the church which is not just to save our soul. That's the first goal we have, of course. Jesus says, whoever, what, what does it profit a man or a woman if they gain the whole world but lose their own soul? But after that, once we have received that gift of faith, once we have become, you might say, men and women of virtue, we're called not just to keep it inside, but to share it, to go out and proclaim the good news. After the apostles received the Holy Spirit at Pentecost, what did they do? They went out. I like to tell the story of a, we had a competition in Shreveport. It was a inner school competition. They would come together and they would team, schools would join up together, form teams at, of grade levels. And then they would have like a religious bowl. They have questions, they'd be questioned on their faith, like a, like a spelling bee. But one part of the competition was for them to get together and reenact in a small skit, some scene of the scriptures. And so one of them was given Pentecost. And so um, you see Jesus is there, Mary's on the side, the apostles, the Holy Spirit comes down, and they all, they're all acting out how they're receiving the Holy Spirit. And then suddenly Peter stands up after they receive the Holy Spirit, and he says, okay, apostles, group hug. <laughs> so they had a group hug, okay. Well, maybe they did have a group hug. I don't know after it was all over. But what, they, what the scripture tells us is that after they received the Holy Spirit, they went out they didn't have a group hug, a meeting. They went out and began to preach this gospel of Jesus crucified for the forgiveness of our sins, but God raised him up for our salvation. That charismatic, that, that concise preaching of the gospel. And so they went out and preached that gospel. We see it today in the, the apostles uh, as they preach um, with the Sanhedrin and the, and the other Jewish officials still questioning them and challenging their rendition of who Jesus was their belief and, of course, the truth that he was the Son of God. He was and is the way, the truth, and the life. And today we have this kind of summed up in a small little phrase here that I think we can carry with us today because in the Gospel of John, catching John in the midst of this, John is talking about Jesus. We catch him in the middle of a discourse today. So there's no introduction. We just, we just start with Jesus' words. But he says, of course, in here, whoever does accept the testimony certifies that God is trustworthy. So that's us, we who believe. We believe, we know that God's word is trustworthy. And then he says this, for the one whom God sent speaks the words of God. He does not ration his gift of the spirit. So the ones who receive this inspiration and faith, faith is a gift, faith in Jesus Christ, 
certifies, believes that God is trustworthy, that these words are true. They put their life on it. They live their life by them. We live our lives by them. But then it says, for the one, for us, who God speaks to us the words of God, who, for the one whom God sent speaks the words of God. So we, we are the ones who God sends and we do not ration the gift of the Spirit. That is, you don't hold back. You should be giving fully to other, anyone you meet what wisdom you might have, what belief you might have, what comfort you can give that comes from your faith. We should not ration it like a little bit here, a little bit there. We should always try to be fully present to the other person, you might say, or the, the world we live in. Our whole lives should be giving witness to what we believe as followers of Jesus Christ. And so, we, and sometimes we pull back, don't we? we we're, in a, we're in a group of people, and the conversation comes up, and you think, oh, God, please don't, please don't ask me what the Catholic Church teaches. Please don't ask me, because if everybody knows you're a Catholic, they're going to come to you and ask you that question very possibly. If they don't know, you, you, you may just remain silent. And I'm not saying it's always a good thing or the right time to blurt out something in the middle of a conversation, in the middle of a party one day and start a big argument in the middle of a party, okay? That's not necessarily, and you may not be, a, might not be an argument, but it might not be the time and the place. But when there is a time and the place, we should be willing to really proclaim that gospel and, and be proud of what we believe and, and put it forth not as a burden, but as a source of joy and life for us as well. So let us today watch our words today. Are we rationing the gift of the Spirit? If we're called upon to help someone, to be present to someone, to give them some advice, to witness Christ's love to them, then let us not ration it, but let us be fully present to them. Give the gift that is needed at that moment as best we can assess, and let us be present to them as Jesus would want us to be, so that we might preach that gospel, that basic gospel of God's love for everyone, that God forgives sins, that he's with them in their troubles, as he is with us, and that he promises them eternal life. Let us be the bearers of that good. Let us be the apostles, well, we are the apostles of today, to go out and bring the good news of Jesus Christ to others. And let us not ration our words, but speak fully from the faith in our heart for the good of ourselves, but also for the, for the salvation of our souls, but also for the good of everyone we meet. Let us now offer our prayers of petition. We pray for our Holy Father, Pope Francis, that he will continue, as St. Stanislaus, proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ uh, without regard to safety and also for the good of all. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we individually and as a church will not ration the Holy Spirit, but as much as we can proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ and his forgiveness of our sins to all we meet, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray today for all teachers who continue to carry on in these last months where it becomes a little more difficult and maybe our energy is edging and, and, uh, and waning a little bit, that God will give our teachers an added grace to be inspired to finish this year strong as good teachers with a real love for their students. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for our seminarians who soon will come to their finals and final evaluations that God will bless them, keep them strong in their faith, and if God calls them, they will continue to be faithful to that call to the priesthood in the future. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, hear the prayers we place before you. We pray them with confidence through your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives forever and ever. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. 
and blessed be God forever. Lord, wash away my iniquities and cleanse me from my sins. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May our pray prayers rise up to you, O Lord, together with the sacrificial offerings, so that purified by your graciousness, we may be conformed to the mysteries of your mighty love. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks and to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all, to loud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. Through him the children of light rise to eternal life, and, and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. For his death is our ransom from death, and in his rising the life of all have risen. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, me, your unworthy servant, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer to one another the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that I should enter under your roof, but uh, say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Persons who are unable to receive the Eucharist are urged to unite themselves spiritually with Christ's sacrifice. Ask the Lord to make himself present with his grace and blessing. The following prayer, composed by St. Alphonsus Liguri in the 18th century, is a good model for your own prayer. O my Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you have already come and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Behold, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Alleluia. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who restore us to eternal life and the resurrection of Christ, increase in us, we pray, the fruits of this Paschal sacrament and pour into our hearts the strength of this saving food through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace. Thanks be to God.
Today's Mass has ended, but our mission continues. Strengthened by this Eucharistic celebration, we are sent forth to reflect Christ's self-giving love to all whom we encounter this day. If you would like to contact us or donate to our television ministry, please write us at Catholic Life Television, Post Office Box 2028, Baton Rouge, Louisiana, 70821, or email at television at diobr.org.